Hi, so you may have seen a, an unboxing that I did for Hex and Hock House, aka uh, Broomsticks and Backflips or The Witch's Skyscraper. Now I'm actually going to do a how to play setup and review. So I've still kept the shrink on for some reason, it just seems to stick on and stay on. So uh, I could take it off, but I'm leaving it on. The rules, as you may have spotted before, English and German, which I'll come back to. The board itself and the box. So when you set it up, it's not too big a board. It's kind of obviously about, it's a quad board, so it's pretty much four times the size of what you find in there. So that fits nicely in shot, as you can see. So we're gonna show you now, obviously I can choose how to do it. Do I wanna do it that way or that way based on the perspective of the camera? I'll leave it like that. We're gonna have broom, which has a magnetic bit on it. You're gonna have character pieces, and that's pretty much it. And then I'm just gonna read you out what I'm setting up. The information, this is the chap who designed it, and information about you know how happy he was making it. So high above the little roof, uh, village roofs, a and it's spelled differently with roofs, a rugged and shaky mountain towers up high in the air and dips everything um, underneath into darkness. On the ledge, thrones a strange and crooked witch's skyscraper. There's a magical sphere on the roof flooding the dark night with bright light like a magical beacon. The parents of the house, but yet it remains silent. The little witches ask themselves, what should we do now? One of them takes a glance at the magic sphere and has an idea. I know what we should do. Go get a broom. We'll have a race to the magic sphere. So now that's how we're going to be playing the game. It's going to be the first person to reach this topmost space. So you set up something like this. So you're going to choose your colour and pick something down. They're going to be magnetic on one side and not on the other, but I'm not going to dictate what it is at this moment in time. Start so player's gonna roll a die, and for in this case, you move your thing, let's say red, three spaces, one, two, three. Next person goes, so it's blue, three, one, two, three. You don't put on top, as they'll stick potentially, a broomstick. So, if you roll a broomstick, you have a choice. Either you're going to be moving first, or you're going to basically be moving that broomstick. But what you're doing is you're going to be grabbing this particular thing here, and you're gonna take it directly above your token. So now that it's yellow, you're gonna take it, and it doesn't grab. If you could have grabbed it, which would be on the other side, it would have gone straight to here, which would be great, because you'd be in the lead. But as it stands, you do not know. So what happens is it stays where it is, but at least you now know it's on the non-attractive side, which is important if we roll an arrow. We don't, green gets to go. Green also is on the other side. Back to, I think it's red. Ah, these should have been differently aligned. So now red gets to go. Also was the wrong side. Blue was on the right side. It goes one space, which isn't ideal, but it's still better than nothing. It's back to, uh, I think it would have been, say it's green's turn. Three, so it goes one, two, three. Now again, we now know what things are. If it was the other way up, they would have uh, stayed together, I believe. Well, a little bit. So let's double check that. Yep. Yellow, they get to go. Now what they do now is they can move one space and flip or flip in one space and they can choose who they flip. So in this case, they're gonna go one and flip themselves because they want to be moving ahead. But now if red goes, they go one space, they flip themselves because they don't want blue to go. What they could do is flip blue to avoid blue then moving. So it's blue, doesn't roll a broomstick, it goes one, it flips itself back green takes a turn one flips itself because it doesn't want to be that side up yellow goes one and now you start to forget who's got what so we're gonna flip red then it's back to red and it goes one two red can't remember red flips itself again blue goes blue has a broom and actually it works out well for blue so now it's back to green green goes one two three so it's better than uh, maybe not using the broom earlier on three four I think it was be yellow, one, two, three. Back to red, one, I can't remember, but it flips you a blue, otherwise blue's gonna go into the lead. Blue goes three, one, two, three. And then it goes back to green, one, and flips. I think it flips uh, red, as it thinks blue's already the wrong side. Two for yellow, one, two, and flips something. It flips green, red goes one. Now I've actually forgotten who's got what at this point, maybe because I'm playing it by myself, but the point being is um, I do recommend this game moving on to the review at a higher player count. So you've seen me set it up, you've seen how I explain how to play it. At a higher player count, you really get confused as to who's who. It does happen in a two and it does happen as, a, as in a four, 
but as you can see, yeah, two out of the four of them were well positioned for that broom. Um, it's quite a tight race. Of course, you've got a die, which kind of um, evens everything out. But because you're flipping and who you flip, that makes a big difference because you could flip yourself. And actually, you didn't want to do that because you were the correct orientation. So what do I think of the game? I've played it with a four-year-old, played it with a five-year-old. Um, they, lo they lose a bit of interest in the sense, okay, they're moving this and then they get to here and they go off and do something. Um, but um, I still find it enjoyable. Um, as four plus games go, you know, I think this is in that kind of four category. And I don't know how much adults would really play it much, but I have played it with adults and I found it fine. But uh, there's something to consider. I kind of give like a six out of ten. It's like, okay, I play it in the mood. It's not long at all. It takes about 10 minutes and yeah if you will with a guessing game it is quite a bit of fun so that is hex and hot house i've chosen not to use a light because i was going to be of glare so hopefully it's not too dark i'd be keen to hear your opinion if you haven't subscribed already please hit the subscribe button and if you have to like it i do recommend you like it and there's descriptions and the youtube comments box i'm more than happy to hear about as videos are uploaded and um, kind of daytime in the uk at the minute but uh, that's a big change, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And there'll be another one in this series coming soon from Pegasus Spieler that I'll be recording straight after. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.